All right, so um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Ember Data adapters. So I don't know like how many of you guys are using Ember Data or have or have been scared away by not knowing what your API needs to look like and all of that stuff. Um, but I've been playing around with it a lot lately, and it's actually pretty easy to configure up to work with like a non-standard API. So I want to show you a little bit of that. Um, so basically, w what I'm going to do is like I've got this app that I created, Ember Hub, which you can put in a username and it lists out lists out your repos, and it just goes out and hits. Uh, GitHub API and gets what it needs and everything. So right now, the way I have this coded is um, just using uh, like Ajax calls. And so I, I'm going to go and convert this to actually use Ember data. Um, so if, if you don't know what Ember data is, it's basically like a library that persists all of your calls uh, to and from the server. Like it, it persists that data so you don't have to go out to the server quite as much. And it really helps out a lot too with um, when you have like r relationships between that data, um, not having multiple rec records of the same data um, hanging around. So, um, so right now, the way this is working, just Ember RCP hash, it's going out and getting the user, then going out and getting the repositories for that user, and uh, returning that to the template here, and displaying it out, and that's pretty much it. So, so the first thing that we're going to do is, is create like a user model. So there's two models that we're going to create, a user model and a repository model. Um, but we'll start with the user. So, so I just generate a model. And <clears throat> then I'm going to come over here. And the only properties that I'm actually using right now are login and avatar URL. So I'll just add those. So then we have our properties on our model. And, and now we actually have to, like, to change some of our code. So like, we, want to, we want our route to, instead of um, going and making an AJAX call, we want to get it from the store. Um, but first, what I'm going to do is actually create an adapter to, like, so it knows where to go and do all of this. So, So you can, uh, when you're creating adapters, you can create like a single adapter for your entire application and handle everything through that, or you can do adapter per model and handle just that model's uh, interactions. So I, I think like if you do one for your entire application, like that can be good because there's like a lot of duplicate code that you're gonna have to do across each model. So like you can really condense it down. But um, if you're just starting out with it, it's probably a little bit easier to just stick with like making one per model and, uh, and going with that, and then figuring out what the common things are that you can condense down. Is it possible to have like two or three that are not necessarily per model, but like for instance, what if I do want to have some uh, GitHub API stuff, but then I've got another one for just a different thing. But yep. GitHub is, you know, I'm not doing just one model, I'm doing like maybe five different models from GitHub. Yep. Yep. And what you can do in that, like that type of scenario is you could have like, maybe you have like your API adapter, and then you have a GitHub API adapter, and then you, you can make each model extend from the correct adapter and, and make it work that way. So, um, so we've got an adapter here for our user model now. And basically, I'm going to start out simple and pretty much just copy um, this over into it. Um, so 
basically the entry point here is find. So I can just return that. And let me, I have to change a little bit here because you can see I've got like, I'm doing params.user ID and the ID comes in differently. So, um, so let's go ahead and look up uh, find. F I D. All right. So there's my params that come in. So I get an ID param that comes in. It's probably a little small for you guys to see, but I don't think it matters too much. So that's what comes in. Uh, store type ID snapshot. The only thing that we're going to use right now is ID. So we can just change that to ID. And then we can go over to our route. And let's just change this with this. Uh, with, we're going to call this from um, Ember data. So find a user given that ID, which was user ID. Okay. So now if I go over to my page, you'll see it's pretty much just confused at this point. So there's, so there's one thing like, Whenever the default um, the default blueprints for Ember CLI generates this like application adapter, and, and it assumes that you're inheriting from an application adapter. Well, you would have had to create it then, but I'm not actually creating an application adapter. So instead of inheriting from that, I want to do. It is could not find module user application imported from Ember Hub user adapter. So basically, this this import statement failed. So so let's go and do ds and we'll go from the rest adapter now. Um, so that should solve that. But then we still have a problem expecting an object as data. So like these errors aren't always the most uh, helpful if you don't know what you're doing. But basically what's happening here is, um, let's see. Is this is what REST adapter is expecting to come back from your API is responses like this where you have um, like if if I'm asking for a user, then I need to have it like wrapped, like user colon, and then the properties for the user. Um, and I don't have that. So like, here's what the actual response from GitHub looks like, um, is like this. It's just an object. It's not an object that's wrapped and pushing in the users. So basically, what we need to do next then is actually wrap our output or our what we get back with that user thing. So, so we can just do that here pretty easily. Um, and we'll do, uh, what do we have in our model? We have login and avatar URL. So this is going to be data.login. So we've got login and then avatar URL, which is uh, snake cased. And we actually need a camel cased. So we can actually do a little bit of conversion here, too. So like. So we're doing that translation. So like if you're, uh, some of that stuff is built in if you're like using active model adapters with active model adapter here and everything. But, but here we actually have to translate this. I could, I could have done like active model adapter and by default it knows to translate snake case into camel case. 
but I've just been doing REST adapter and doing it myself. Um, so now if we go back over here, we should still see an error. And this one's actually, let me make sure. Oh, I never wrapped it. So that's the first error. Um, so. All right. So now we've got it wrapped. And we have one more error. You must include an ID uh, for the user that got pushed in. So we have to include an ID property. Um, and since I'm just uh, requesting this user, like user ID, off, which is um, just that my like actual user ID, it's not like a number or anything, it's just that string. So I'm just gonna use login, which is what I like, which is what this user ID is here that I request it with. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you kind of want um, like whatever you like whenever you say store dot find user and then you pass in an ID, you want that to be like the same type of thing that you're using here. So like I want to be able to say store dot find dot user um, Jim A five four six nine and get that user. So that needs to be my ID. The login does then. Yep. Yep. So, and then I'm just kind of chaining here. So then, like, yeah, this will be my ultimate return will be this then. Does that make sense? Yep. So. Yeah, because, like, once you're, like, once you're chaining promises, like, this is just the result, like, another promise result, basically. So, so now that we have our ID, we should see stuff. It, it looks a little better now. But we have a problem that uh, avatar isn't showing up, which that's a pretty easy fix because now that we're using our data, we're not using the direct like direct output from the GitHub API. We're we're actually calling into our model object. So this isn't snake cased anymore. This is camel cased. So we can just convert that. And if we go back over, you should see the the avatar now. So so that's kind of the first step. And like. And basically, at this point, we're just like scraping the bare edges of Ember data. Because um, find is basically like the first thing that gets called whenever you call store.find. It gets, it gets proxied over to this, this function. And that's, I mean, there's a lot of other Ember data goodness like beyond that that we're just skipping completely because we're just straight up returning data. Um, so that's kind of like the next step is start utilizing more of the Ember data stuff. At, until like a month ago, this was when people said like they would write a custom adapter for something. This is what I thought they were doing. Um, so I was just like barely scraping the surface. And, and so in the last month, I've kind of like figured out like more of the depths of it. So basically the first step of this is like, REST adapter has a find implementation, and that find implementation calls get, get JSON or whatever like Ajax method itself. So rather than calling get JSON ourselves, we can benefit from like that base implementation. So, but in order to do that, it like there's one critical piece of information here, which is the URL. So if we get rid of this and call call super, then we, we lose the opportunity to set that URL. But um, there's actually like a, a hook for that, which is just host. And you can just pass the string to host. And that sets that. And notice I didn't include users on there. Because it's smart enough to know this is the user's model, so I'm going to hit the user's route. Which you can do some overriding on that. There's like a build URL uh, function where you can override, like, you know, like for example, here in GitHub, 
if I make a model called repository, the actual endpoint is repos, not repositories. So it's going to try and hit repositories where I can override build URL and tell it to hit repos. So, so that we've got that. And so now we're going to replace this with a call to super. Which also returns a promise. And we can do our, uh, all the same transformation right there. So now if we go back over, it should refresh. And all still work. So now we're not actually calling Ajax itself. We're having Ember Data do that for us. And we're starting to like, utilize some of the like, lower down Ember Data stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I have my steps. So we've, we've created our model and our adapter. And we stopped using uh, GitJSON. And then the next step is to, um, to introduce serializers. So basically, the problem here with doing it this way is this. So find function is the same function that gets called whether you're looking for a single user object or a full list of user objects. So that can kind of cause a problem here because I need to know whether to make this user or users and like a few other things. Um, so I need to be able to differentiate like from what's a call for one object versus what's a call for many objects and handle things accordingly. Um, so luckily, that's built in a serializer for us. So find, like under the hood, this super call right here is going to, uh, at some point down the line, call a serializer function. And that serializer function is responsible for doing this transformation. So, so basically, the way that I understand it right now, after playing with this for about a month, is that adapters are basically responsible for crafting the request. And serializers are basically responsible for, for handling that request and transforming it into what Ember data needs. So I could be wrong on that, but everything that I've done so far, that holds true. So, so, it would, so we basically, we want to get this, this out of the adapter and into the serializer. So, so I'm going to create a user serializer. I feel like this got small again. There we go. And now I've got my serializer. And it's funny because by default, adapters, based off the blueprint, Adapters default to inheriting from application adapter, but serializers default from REST serializer. So I don't know like, if there's a reason or if they just are out of sync. So yeah. So basically, our hook in here, um, we have two hooks in here. Uh, we have extract single and extract, uh, what's the other one, is extract single and extract mini or something like that. Extract array. So, so one thing that's like, I don't know, that I found really important as I'm going through this is to like really pay attention to docs. Because a lot of these things are private API. And then all of a sudden, you know, like you, you know, like Ember data isn't really like settled down completely yet. It, it's been pretty stable, but it's not, it's not stable enough where I want to be like overriding private APIs and doing weird things with that. So like, so I've been paying a lot of attention to like trying to look into each thing that I'm going to try and override and make sure that it's not a private API. So like, for example, you can see if it is a private API, it's going to have private next to it. So you know, you know that. Um, and then some other things too, like I, I, there's like extract find, and that looked enticing because I, that's what I'm trying to do is like transform the find stuff. But then I look into the, the docs here and it says like, it's a hook, it does some stuff. By default, this me method aliases for extract single. 
And if you look through the docs on any of these extract calls, it pretty much comes down to all of them either alias extract single or they alias extract array. So those are the two ones that are like really important to us that we want to use inside of our serializer. So let's do, let's grab our extract single because we're doing a, a we're looking up a single user. So I'm going to grab the params here. Okay, I'm going to do extract single. And so I'm going to go grab this logic down here. I want to move that. I'll just grab this part, my transform logic. I want to move that into the serializer. So since we're doing that, transform the logic over there, we don't, have, we don't need this then any longer. And if you look at it, now the only thing that our find function is doing is calling super. So it's pointless. So we can kill find altogether now. So that gets a little bit cleaner. And now we move in our serializer and let's like actually look at this. So, so one thing that, that we're doing here, like we're just returning data again. We're not calling super. So that's another thing that I really try to pay attention to is that like, like I want to call super on all these things because there might be lower layers of things that are doing awesome stuff for me and I don't know about it and I'm like just bypassing that whenever I return something default like that. So I actually want to skip this and um, let's just put this down here for now. Let's do a super. Oh yeah. There's some other stuff too, like this one I learned today. Did you know you could do this? You could do um instead of all this, you can just go like that. And then you get a you get better uh, error reporting and everything because it's named function. So um all right. So let's do this. We're just going to call super, but like this is where our data is, is in our payload. That's the data that came back from the server. So we, we want to actually make some slight modifications to that payload. So let's just do it this way. We'll just do payload equals. So we're just going to modify our payload and do that. And then we have to change all these data to payloads. All right. So we were modifying our payload, wrapping it, transforming all of the properties here, and then we're just passing that right down to super and continuing on. Does that all make sense? So we should still be working, and we are, so that's cute. <laughs> all right. Or I'm coffee scripting. And then do dot 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 args here. But then you'd have to, what was the second param was? Yeah, it's like one or something. And then. Just take it out of the pipe core. Put it back the way it Go back, go back. <laughs> Yeah. No, that won't that won't work because your arguments kind of works a little funny. So like it's yeah, and we're and this wouldn't be overriding that I don't think, but we can try it. And this is the like, I don't know if you guys can read that, but this is like, uh, you'll see this error a lot if you do things wrong, like data, like passing data to push, you're not passing data to push or something like that, so. Yep. 
basically like this air what i found it to mean so far is that like you're it's basically you're not structured correctly you don't have this wrapper object so so basically what it sounds like is it probably passed this through just fine maybe it did maybe it didn't but either way it didn't it didn't pass a modified version of the payload so I'll make sure we're back in a good state cool all right, so we're happy now because we've got a slim down adapter. There's almost nothing there. And then we've got all this put in extract single and that's all good. Let me see what we have next. Okay, so the problem with doing it this way, there's always a problem, right? So the problem with doing it this way is um, when I want to go write my extract array, Because now I'm not, I'm gonna have to dupe all this transform logic in extract array, which sucks. And extract array, the payload is an array, not an item. So I'm gonna have to put this inside of a map. And it, so it just gets kind of messy. So th at the end of the day, you really don't want your transform logic in extract single you want to move one level down. So like this super, the next thing that it's going to call, or, or somewhere down the line, one of the next things it's going to call is normalize. And normalize is the good, great resting place for transforming an object over to what Ember Data expects. So, Get my params. Does anybody else do this? Like every single time that you, like I just look. Yeah, because I don't, I don't know what they are. <laughs> so, what's that? Yeah, Dash and Alfred. <laughs> like, look at this. I mean, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's dash is um is this guy right here and it's it's for looking up docs and it does it all offline so you can look them up on a plane or whatever and it's just like ridiculously fast and you can install docs for Ember, for Angular, for jQuery, for like all kinds of things are out there Ru Ruby like all kinds of stuff. Um, and then once you have those in there, it, you can look them up here real easy. But then the like, second piece of it is Alfred. So Alfred has a plugin where it can integrate with Dash. So this is the same as like your Spotlight, right? If you haven't used Alfred before. But since it can integrate with things, we can get um, like results right here. So. So it's, it's already starting to look into, and look, it even in the background, it updated what I'm searching for. It's crazy. It's awesome. So if you're not using it, like, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet, and you should check it out. Oh, one of the other things that's funny, like, side note about Dash is, like, there's a free version. It, what I have here is paid version. There's a free version, but the way the free version works is um, it delays you for a few seconds every time you look something up which kind of defeats the whole purpose of Dash is that you can look it up fast, but then you get the delay. So like, just buy it. Like if you don't buy it, you're not gonna use it because you're gonna realize you can just look it up faster in the browser, but. And the price keeps going up because, yeah. because it's so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think I paid somewhere around there. And then the Alfred, like to get it, the Alfred integration is like another 30 or something like that. But it's, yeah, you use it every day. So, you, you know, it's like buying a nice pair of headphones. It's worth it because you always have them on. All right, so let's stick with our like, our convention here where we always want to call our super. So, All right, so we're not doing anything yet. And it's funny because like the, the convention is like, well, I don't even remember what, in, when we were in our adapter, we named 
the thing we're transforming, and we named it data. And here it's called payload, and then in normalized it's called hash. So the name keeps changing as we dive deeper. So in, in normalize, the, way, the hash that you're getting is a single object. So extract array will call this normalize function once for every object in the, relay, or in the array, and extract single will call it once. Um, there is a purpose for extract single and extract array, and that purpose is like actually doing this, this wrapper, like wrapping it with user or wrapping it with users. So the logic we want in here is that So we're just going to transform our hash. Go ahead. No. OK. Uh, all right. That all looks good. And then we don't need this anymore. We can replace this with payload. Did I forget that semicolon and nobody said anything? Or you guys all like don't do semicolons. <laughs> so here, like extract single. So we a good thing for extract single is this is a good place to wrap your payload if it's not already wrapped from your API. And then in here, we're just doing our transform. So let's see if it still works. I feel like it's been a while since we looked over here. What's that? No, here is the GitHub response here. It's just a single object, so. All right. So it's reloading, which means my Ember server is still running, and, and I still haven't broken anything. So that's awesome. <laughs> All right. So the next step. So we moved everything to normalize. And then the last step here is like, it is going to be a little bit of a repeat of the things I've done already, but like, but now we want to actually create a repository model, and we want the user model and the repository model to be related and all that good fun stuff. So, so we know we need a few things. We know we need, um, well, f let's just start out making our model. So. All right. Oh, repository. OK. And this looks all good. And let's look. What we're, we're, the only thing we're using from repository is full name. So so that's the only thing I'm going to put in there for now. And. We need to make these objects related. So let's go over here and add like repositories. I think that's right, has many repository. And this is an async relationship because um, if you look at the response here, we don't get any repos. We do get repos URL, which is actually pretty, that'll prove useful. Um, but we don't have any repos, so this will be async. We saw that at the same time. <laughs> All right, cool. So. So we've got our model, we've got our relation, but we know we like since we've already gone through this, we know we're going to need a few other things. I th think let's start out with like uh, let's start out with utilizing this repos URL. So there is um, a find has many on the adapter. 
Um, and if you look into this, this is where I found out how like useful that that, that repo's URL is. Because if you read this, it's probably a little small for you guys, but if you read this, basically um, what it says is if you have a link to the relationship, um, that can be helpful, right? So this, like, th he's linking to the comments, and then, it, and then it knows where to go and hit for the async relationship and everything like that. Yep. So, so since our adapter is pretty much the only thing we're doing in our adapters is like figuring out what request to make, right? And the only thing we need to know is the link to hit, and we can get the link from that repo's URL, then we really don't need an adapter for re repositories at this point. Um, if we were to extend this application, we'd probably need it, but at this point we don't. So let's go in here and actually utilize that link. So this is, um, this is how you pass it through. You, this is how Dem Ember data expects it, it uh, to have a links hash and then each related model would be listed here. So, so repositories is what we called it, so that's what we have to call it here. Um, and what's that? I think that's right. Yeah, so I mean, it would be, a, it, since it's a has many, we want to pluralize it, yeah. So, and we'll pull that, what was it called, repos URL, I think. I'll just copy it. So that should set up our relationship, but we still need to write all this, lo like, you know, the logic to wrap it and everything like that. If you look into the, the um, GitHub API docs for repositories, it's very similar to users, as you might expect. And if I'm getting a list of repositories, uh, then it returns back an array of objects, which is not what we want. We want, um, we want that wrapped with something that says repositories, right? So, so we're going to need in this case, it's not extract single, it's extract, uh, what, I keep forgetting what the other one's called, extract array. Um, and we're gonna wrap that. And of course, the normalize. So let's go ahead and create a repository serializer because I think that's the only thing we need. Pulling params again. We'll do our super thing. All right. And this time we want it to be repositories. We should be good. And then we want a normalize function. So I'm just going to piggyback off of this one for a minute. Missed something. Oh, thanks. Might not be happy with that. We can pee back off of here. Um, but we don't need all this stuff. We just need full name. not using this yet 
if you remember right back from our router, we're still just making that Ajax call, but, um, but we're not breaking anything, so that's important. <laughs> so let's go back and let's try and update our route, our user route. And, and now we're gonna ac access the repositories off of our user, so we don't really need this Ember uh, RCP hash any longer. So we can ditch all this and just return a user, which looks nice. And then we have to modify our template a little bit because it's no longer model.user. But this works out right. It's, it is model.repositories still. But now it's just, you know, it's going a different way about getting there. And one last thing, we need to camelize this because we're looking at a model or uh, looking at a model now. And on a refresh, you can see it all loads up. So. And the fact that repositories is async, don't care, it just works. Huh? Yeah. So it, it, it just works because it knows that, like, Whenever it's time to go look up that repository, we've told it, oh, just go hit that URL and you're good. And it does it with promises and everything just works. So, so some of the next steps, this is all, all I have like prepared, but some of the next steps that you might go through would be like to extend these out so you can like, uh, So you can maybe make like a repositories route to your application that hits a repository directly and things like that. So, so you might want to make uh, your repository adapter and put that host thing in there again. Um, and then also uh, you want, you'll want extract single for your repository then. So like, um, Yeah. So like right now, we only know how to extract arrays. Yeah. So if we have a single object, we're, we're out of luck. So, so you just do that. But you want a repository. Right? Now you support that. And maybe you want to do the same with user for some reason. I don't know. So like it took two seconds and now I support all these other things because of that. So like Is it necessary to have a root object for the rest of the serial or a jacket or a serializer to the ball? Yeah. Yep, everything needs a root. It, it wasn't just a nice a nice thing you were doing for your for your keys or something. You know, it, it's just that's what Ember Data expects. So So that's basically it. Does anybody have any questions or Oh, another, th go ahead. Well, I was just trying to think if you had an API that wasn't as close to the conventions as GitHub with the yeah. URLs. Though you're saying you just use the URLs. Yep. So I can show you like how I learned all of this stuff. Um, I'm like working on a little side project where I'm actually hitting the GitHub API. So I was al already familiar with it, so it made it easy to, to work off of that for here. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so that's the kind of the next step and that's what I want to hit on is like the only thing out of all these params that we're using is um is payload, right? But there's primary type class that will it'll tell you which class you're working. So remember in the very beginning I said you can make one of these serializers and one of these adapters for every single class. But then as you go along doing that, you'll kind of learn that like exactly like you said, you're repeating a lot of similar stuff, right? Um, and and you found it right away. So basically, like these, are, they're so similar, and we are getting primary type class passed in, so we can use that to know what that is, and th then we could write a single serializer that handles both of these functions for all objects that extend from it. And then we could 
simplify our, our serializers for each object down to just writing the normalize, stuff like that. So, so here's the project that I have been working on. And I have like a GitHub um, adapter and that handles like the basic stuff, like the host name that's going to be the same on everything. Um, I'm passing in an access token so I can set headers and that'll, those will go through on every request. Um, path for type. So this is like, um, like you were saying, like uh, what if the, the actual route that you're hitting isn't just users or repositories or something simple like that, like you can do path for type and, and change some stuff there. So like I prefixed all these models, GitHub this, GitHub that, GitHub whatever, so somebody using it as an add-on doesn't just get a user object dropped on them, which they probably have an, a user object already. Um, so I prefixed everything with GitHub. So what I did in here was like on path for type, I stripped off, because it, it, it's going to think like I need to hit GitHub, like GitHub or api.github.com slash GitHub users. But it really just wants users, so I strip off GitHub and do some other stuff like that. And then if you look in like serializers, that's some of the stuff that you're talking about. I've got extract array, and I just have wrapped payload. I get the type, uh, I use this primary type, get the type key, which is the sh just a string. Um, pluralize it here, because it's singular by default, this type key string is. So I don't have to do anything with it here, but I had to pluralize it here. Um, so those are built in by default. And then like, if you look up at like, like GitHub user, it just has normalize. And then this is some like funny logic, so don't worry about that. But um, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I do in here. Um, on my adapter, I have like, I'm, a, I'm adding a, an authorization token each time. So you can override headers, and then those will go through on every, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're using, if you're on the user adapter, then those headers will be applicable to the user adapter. But here I'm doing like, this is my GitHub adapter. And then if you look at my other adapters, they all inherit from GitHub adapter. So they all get this um, for free. And basically what I've done here is I'm using a service, uh, I think, where is it? I have a session service. You see that Ember inject service session. And then that has a GitHub access token on it and I just push that into my authorization. I don't know why GitHub, like, they tell you to do token space instead of bearer space. I don't know if you've done a lot of OAuth before, but I found that a little bit weird. Bearer space works, but they tell you to do tokens, so I left it at that. Yeah, so if you were to use this like add-on that I'm creating, um, it's dependent upon you creating a session called service. So you would have to add this library like Ember install, Ember data GitHub, and then Ember G ser or service session. And then inside that, then you do whatever you need to do to get this GitHub access token property on it. Okay. So there's a little assumption there. So, yep. So now, like some things that I I haven't looked into the things that I don't know yet. How does this, all this play into like saves and stuff like that? Because everything that I've done so far, where I'm doing like deep uh, adapter and serializer logic, is all read only. So I don't know how it all plays in with saves. So that would be interesting to look into. Another thing that's interesting is like on, if you dig more into the documentation for the GitHub API, it has something similar to a lot of other APIs. Paging, filtering, sorting, that kind of stuff. 
and you can do those on relationships and stuff like that too. So I, I like right now, if you look at this, um, like if you look up like GitHub or something like that, you're only going to get like, like I get their, their, their um, repositories through G because it only returns like the first 20 or 25 or something like that after that you have to page. So I, I need to figure out how you page a relationship. That'll be fun. I think I'm, my thought is to go do some kind of service thing, but, but the side project I'm working on, I'm, I'm like essentially respecting the same like uh, routing conventions as GitHub. So I'm, you don't, I don't really need to page yet because you know what your GitHub URL is, so you should know how to get to that repository on my side project, so. But that's one of the other things I have to look into. Yeah. Relations. And I don't, as far as I know, I don't, I don't, I don't know that that's handled, I don't think that's handled in number data at all yet. I, I, I think it's, it requires custom logic. I don't know if there's good, like, if there's good hooks, like all these ones that you saw today to like be able to tap into to like, you know, just, oh, just paste your page, paging logic here and all will be happy. Like, I don't know if it's that easy. <laughs> so, yep. Any other questions or? Yeah, so like that that's why I didn't know like anything about Ember data until like a month or two ago was because app active model serializers is amazing, right? So like if you're if you're doing a Rails project. You guys actually have data at all? Yeah, we're using Yeah. So like if you're using it if you're like if you're doing an Ember project and you're you have a Rails backend and you completely control that API and you don't like you don't already have like an API like laid out that you know hundreds of clients are consuming or something like like if you're like starting this from scratch just fire up a rails project do active model serializers and that does all the transform logic to make it look like so you don't need any of these normalized things yeah. and um i think the like the routing conventions like that that's not given to you i mean you have to like you're going to want to put your users route at slash users or slash API slash users or whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And and they do you'd use instead of REST serializer, you'd use active model serializer here and it's built into Ember data so you don't have to include any other libraries to do it. Um, and that handles like all of these snake cases um, automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. It's, I mean, if you're fortunate enough to be able to use it, it's really nice and easy to use. To be honest, yeah. To be honest, the, the adapter code that you watched me write today is probably more adapter and serializer logic than we have in our entire application because we're using active model serializers and active model adapters, so. But not everybody can, and that's what, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, okay, so next steps, like, so if you guys um, are connecting to, like, non standard APIs or want to and side projects or things like that, and you forget um, everything I told you today, if I didn't do bad, there might be a recording on the internet. But also, I have um, everything that I went through today is on this repo on my uh, site here, or my GitHub. And I have like all the steps that I walked through. Um, so if you go to this repo, the master is the starting state that we we're at. And then there's a pull request that I'm just going to leave open for anybody to look at. And if you look at the, the diff there, that's the culmination of everything that we worked on here. So you can see the full transformation from, from Ajax to, to uh, adapters and serializers. 
so. Cool. That's all I had. <laughs>